to So Pretty Kitty. This is my YouTube vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing and welcome back to any of my subscribers. I'm so pleased and hello to anyone that's new watching today. Please click the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like my video. So today I am going to tell you about some exciting new purchases that I got from Ikea. I have a tiny little desk in the corner of my dining room which is where I do most of my sewing. I also have um, a sort of dresser that's got fabric underneath and it's really disorganised and actually I find myself buying things that I don't need because I can't find or I don't realise or I don't remember that I've already got those things but just can't see them so I decided that I want to do a bit of a makeover of my sewing space so I thought you guys would be interested in seeing that. Okay so this is where I do my sewing and I'm kind of embarrassed and a bit ashamed because it is a mess. So you can see I've got some bunting up there which I made when one of my kids was small it was originally in their bedroom and I've also got lots and lots of jars full of bits and pieces but over the years I've kind of forgotten what's in them and that shelving unit was a little one that I picked up in a charity shop for about £10 and I painted it with some Annie Sloan chalk paint. Same with my desk, I got my desk from a charity shop that was about £25 I think and I quite like the shabby chic style so chalk paint is perfect for that. I've got my sewing machine and my overlocker. I've also got my daughter's sewing machine there. Loads of magazines. My patterns are just all over the place. There's books. Uh, the cupboard underneath here is full of magazines and my thread box, loads of patterns. And each one of these little suitcases up here has patterns in. So. In Ikea the other day, I saw that they now do pegboards and I have been looking at other people's sewing spaces and really loving the idea of having a pegboard. And luckily I have enough room on the wall next to my sewing desk that I can put one of these. So I purchased myself, they're called Scardis. I'll just show you, I don't know how much of this I'll be able to show. Scardis. So you get um, a board, which I, it was about £10 and then you have to purchase all the bits and pieces that you want to put on your board in order to customise it, make it look good. So I bought, I mean it's really hard to tell what you're going to need and how you know how you're going to put it all together until you do it. So I bought myself one of the shelves, so this is a shelf that clips onto the board and um, I'm planning on keeping small fiddly things in there maybe, uh, perhaps my, things like my unpicker, um, elastic threader, anything else that I've got that's little. I've also got two of these Scardis boxes, so these boxes hook on and you can use them as pen pots or um, I mean, I'm just excited. I don't know what I'm going to put in them, but I'm going to put something in them. I've got two of those, so I figured that. I was kind of roughly looking at what the display looked like and sort of figuring out how many bits and pieces I needed to buy in order to make this board up. The next thing I bought was this really fab bag. So there's a picture here on the back. So it's a bag with a wire rim and you hook that on to the board and it's in this sort of like really nice grey colour which kind of goes with the colours of our dining room anyway so I was thinking to myself maybe I could put my most used patterns in that one or um, magazines or right sorry about that I was talking about this lovely bag and then my um, iPad decided to run out of battery which is not very useful Anyway, so yes, I'm going to hook this bag at the bottom of my pegboard and uh, find all sorts of lovely things to go in it. And then I bought a rail, so this is like a, a bit like a kitchen towel rail, but I was thinking I could put threads or ribbons or um, reels on the bottom there, sellotape maybe, all those bits and pieces that can just go on the rail. And then I also bought some 
hooks. So these you can hang scissors from and rotary cutters and things. And underneath the pegboard itself, I'm going to pop this, um, what do you call it? Underneath the pegboard itself, I'm going to pop this and then I'm going to hang these lovely crocheted bags. So there's two of these in a pack. These were really reasonable. I think they were about £6 for two. And I um, have just started crocheting, but I'm not very good. And it would take me an awful lot longer to make one of these than just pick one up in Ikea. So yeah, I was thinking that that would be good for popping things in just underneath the pegboard. And then lastly, two more things. I bought some of these Ziploc bags, which they sell in Ikea, because I was thinking, actually, they're really handy storage for patterns. Um, when I've traced out patterns, I often put them in Ziploc bags. So um, I don't think these actually have a zip on the top. I think they're the ones that you just sort of squeeze to close. But um, I picked up some of those in the six litre size. So that's the biggest ones they do. And then finally, I couldn't, I mean, I certainly do not need any more fabric, you know, like all of those lovely people out there. I'm sure you have more fabric than you need. But I've spoken about using IKEA blankets to make clothes before. And at the moment, they've got this great teal green colour mm -hmm. and they're like 4 50 or something. So I walked past it three times and thought, mm, I don't need that. I don't need that. And then somehow it came home. So I will probably, I was thinking whether or not, can I make a Stella hoodie out of this? I mean, it's not very stretchy, that's the only trouble. It's stretchy in one direction and not the other because it's fleece, but it might be a bit hot for this summer, but yeah, I couldn't resist the colour. And the amount of fabric you get on one of these blankets, you know, it, it's actually really, they're 130 by 170 centimetres, so you actually get a decent amount of fleece fabric for £4.50, and I'm having used them before, I know that they are, they wash really well and um, make up into garments really nicely, so bought that. So yeah, that is my haul from Ikea. So here we are, as if by magic my new and improved sewing space and I couldn't be more pleased with it. I am just absolutely dying to do some sewing now because everything is organised and where it needs to be. So I am so happy. This IKEA pegboard looks amazing. Um, it's really useful. Uh, probably my most favourite purchase for ages actually. And on the top I put the shelf. So up here we've got a mason jar which I've turned into a pin cushion and inside I've got all my pretty kitty um, clothing labels and um, pickers and pins and little clips for use in, instead of pins when I'm using certain fabric so that shelf is super handy and then just below that I've got my bag which I decided to put all my rulers and set squares and uh, my cutter for um, paper cutting PDF patterns and some spare scissors in there so there's a quilting ruler in there as well so that's super useful because they were all in my drawer originally down at the bottom i decided against the peg rail and just used two of the hooks to hang these two crochet bags up and i love the way they look hanging on the bottom on the right hand side i've got patterns that i'm going to be working on shortly so i don't have to keep hunting for them and my little notebook, which I put the kids' measurements and ideas in. And then on the left-hand side, I've got all my spare overlocker cones, another notepad, another pattern that I'm hoping to get done this summer. Um, so that's really useful. The only thing I wasn't really sure about what to do with was the rail, because actually it turned out I didn't have that many reels of things. So I've put both of my um, tape measures on there and I discovered this wrist pin cushion whilst I was tidying out. I had no idea I had that, so that was quite a useful find. And then I just popped some sellotape on there for when I'm making PDF patterns up. And then above that, I've got two of these lovely pots, although I think what I might do is move them along one and see if I can squeeze another pot on because these are super useful. I've got all pens, pencils, 
uh, my rotary cutter, which unfortunately wouldn't hang like the scissors because the hooks aren't quite sort of deep enough to hang them. And then in this side, I've got snips and sewing machine needles and yeah, another pot would be useful, I think. So I think I've got room for another on there. And then hanging above, I've got a USB key, which I put my PDF patterns onto and my pinking shears and scissors. And yeah, so that is probably my most favorite part of the whole thing. Second only by this wonderful thread uh, pegboard, which my mum bought me for my birthday. So I had no idea I had that many threads until I started organizing them all. And there's 120 pegs on that pegboard and I filled them all up and had a few left over. But it's really lovely to see them all up there and it's kind of bright and colourful. My shelves, I just reorganised what was inside each of those pots so I know now where to look for things like spare machine feet, buttons, um, elastic, uh, decorative thread, all that kind of stuff. I did a little, my mum's got a brand new machine embroidery um, an Elner, I think it's an Elner 860 and we've been playing around with it and I managed to make this on it the other day, uh, designed that myself so I was really pleased, I've added that to my space. I've still got the bunting up as you can see and all the bits and pieces that were there hanging before and then in the window I've got all my sewing books and my boxes here which have patterns in the bottom too and um, bits and pieces in this one really and elastics and all that kind of stuff. My magnetic pin cushion which is fabulous. I can highly recommend one of those because you just have to hover it over the table and it picks everything up. And now I can happily sit at my sewing machine without having like tons of stuff in the way and having to move it. So I normally move the overlocker onto the dining room table anyway to give me some more space. This little bag here was made for me by a dear friend and it's a thread catcher, that's what I use it for. So when I'm sewing, I just chuck all my thread in there. And then in my drawers, here's one of the Ziploc bags I talked about, the Ikea ones. In there is a summer hat for my daughter, which is all cut out and ready to sew up. So it's nice to keep all the pieces in one place. And then I've got uh, giant knitting needles and my bobbins and paper cutting scissors and bits and pieces and my machine, um, uh, my machine manuals. That's the word I'm looking for. So I wanted to talk to you about this chair because it was a gift to me from my husband about two years ago for my birthday. And it was a brilliant surprise as I, I was needing a chair for my desk. And he sourced this via eBay. It was a secondhand 1950s or 60s uh, sewing chair that he found on eBay and had shipped from the US. And when it arrived, apparently, it was uh, really grubby and had a sort of plasticky UPVC kind of cover all over it, really old fashioned. And between him and my mum, they uh, redecorated it and reupholstered it and turned it into the most fantastic chair. I love this chair. And the reason I love it so much is because it's a sewing chair. It has a secret compartment where I can keep all my pattern weights and lots of my patterns. So it's really comfortable, this chair. So I can, if you want to do a bit of upcycling, um, I'm I led to believe there's quite a few of these sorts of pieces of furniture around for sewing so it's prime for a bit of upcycling and yeah it's nice to know I've got something old and um, use, still useful at my desk so yeah I have to admit my actual fabric stash is still in the same state that it was before I started all of this because I physically don't have enough room I'll show you in this cupboard under here, so I don't think I got that far. So this cupboard under here has lots and lots of patterns. It also has folders where I keep traced out patterns. And in the box that used to have all my threads in, I now have uh, all my ribbons and trims. So there is no 
need there's no room for any fabric in there so unfortunately the stash is still out of control and something I need to sort out but um, for the time being I thought you would like to see the transformation of my sewing space and maybe it'll inspire you to sort your sewing space out too for watching today uh, if you like my videos please press the subscribe button you can also press the little bell if you would like a reminder when the next video comes out and give me a thumbs up and write me comments I love reading people's comments thanks so much for watching bye